Hi, my name is Adam Champy, and I'm the product lead for the Google Cast SDK and the Cast integrations with OEM TV partners. I'm joined here by Sasha. My name is Sasha Brüter. I'm heading up the Android TV team. Uh, and this is not my Twitter handle. So whoever you message, please be nice. <laughs> uh, um, also, who of you is actually here for the session? And who is here because this is a room with shade and quite cool? OK, no hands go up. Who is here for free devices? OK, very good. There are no free devices. <laughs> so we're talking with you a little bit about the living room today. And um, um, Adam will talk about cost. I will talk a little bit later about Android TV. So heading over to Adam. Great. So we're going to talk about building integrated experiences for the living room. And for many of you, you may not think this, the stakes are that high. But let me take you through a, a scenario that you've probably experienced. Millions of people will go home tonight or tomorrow and turn on the TV. And if they're unlucky, very unlucky, they might end up watching five to seven episodes, reruns, of possibly the worst reality TV show there is. And what's scary about that is that you probably have an idea of the show you think I'm talking about, or you have three to four candidates in mind. We're talking today about an experience that should be much easier for consumers than turning on and struggling to find something. We're talking today about our vision for the living room, which is unified by Google Cast. Google Cast is a technology that connects the mobile phones that billions of people have with entertainment devices, whether they're extender devices like Chromecast or integrated devices like Android TV, or we'll soon talk about Cast TV. What this does is it brings entertainment from the smallest screens that you have onto the most beautiful displays in your home, and sound to the best speakers that you have. More specifically, if this wasn't a bit confusing for some folks, Google Cast is about the mobile experience and taking mobile apps and extending the content to larger screens or larger speakers. So focus in on that if you're a mobile developer. Android TV is about taking the full power of Android and realizing it in a TV form factor, controlled by a D-pad remote. Sasha will take you through a lot of that in the Android N updates in a few minutes. The Google Cast experience, for those of you who haven't seen it, is unified by the idea of a cast button, which takes the apps that you already know and love and adds this extension to a large screen. So if you press this button, it takes the video onto the screen. Or if you press this button, it takes the music into your speakers. And millions of people love this. What's amazing about this, too, is that we've enabled thousands of apps. And if you want to see which apps we've enabled, go to g.code-castapps. And these are the same apps that users download and use on their mobile devices with Cast added. So there's nothing else for the user to do on the app side. For everybody in this room, that's probably enough that you could probably figure out how to make all of this experience work great. But there's a lot of people who aren't at I.O. or in different places that look at streaming as still being too far away. They look at it as an HDMI port connection and saying, I, I don't want to plug hardware into my device. Or they look at an experience of input switching and say, this is a recipe for disaster. Because before I push the input button, everything's working. And when I push the input button, Something else happens, and I probably have a one in four chance of getting it wrong because I have four inputs on my TV. So we took this message to heart and worked with the team at Vizio to launch the first TV with Cast built in. And in particular, this is one of them. It's a beautiful P-series display, and it has 4K casting as well as Dolby Vision casting. And that's the first integrated device to do this, and it's gorgeous. And we get to see them out in the sandbox as well. And what we did is we made it possible for that same SDK that developers use, that cast, to enable the TV to switch to cast. So as soon as you push the cast button, instead of having to hope that you're on the right input, it's just a seamless experience for the consumer. And Vizio has brought this technology into their TVs as well as their speakers and soundbars. So today, we're also proud to announce the Google Cast for TV program, extending this capability to Toshiba, Philips, Magnavox, and Polaroid, to take this technology to millions more consumers. What's amazing for the developer community is that you can now reach millions of endpoints, not just on Chromecast, 
not just on Android TV, but in a class of device that integrates Cast, purely, just Cast. And what's amazing about this is that it's that same Cast button that I talked about in the first experience. And many of these devices, if not all, will also have another feature, which is the idea that they can wake on Cast, where if you press that Cast button, the TV wakes up without the user having to do anything. So instead of having to find the remote control, turn on the TV, hope to get to the right input, you're one cast button away from the content that you love. So that's the consumer journey and enabling more eyeballs for the developer community. But what we also are proud to announce today is the new Google Cast SDK. And this is our first major update in a few years. And it's based on a lot of the feedback that we've gotten about how Cast works. And one of the things that you may think is, you know, I've explained this very simple UX model where you hit a cast button and video goes from a small little device to a big device. There's a lot of edge cases and corner cases and things to think about for the developer in that experience. And historically, honestly, our SDK made you think about a lot of those things. What we're looking at in our new SDK that will come out in the next few weeks is us taking the burden on implementing every single one of the CAST UX guidelines, which are these corner cases and manage these best practices. Additionally, we think we can re really reduce development time by not only offering that, but also offering the right abstraction between what you're developing and what the CAST SDK provides. And I'll take you through that a little bit. For way more detail on all of this, come to our talk at 9 a.m. on Friday. And if you don't get up for 9 a.m. on Fridays, that talk will also be recorded. So the cast lifecycle to go into a little bit, if you don't come on Friday, is about four major steps, three of which are done almost all the time and one's kind of optional. The first one is discovery, trying to figure out, do I have a TV? Do I have a Chromecast? Do I have an Android TV on my network? And that's trying to figure out, again, how to discover devices. The next step is actually connecting to it, launching the, what's called a receiver app. The third step is then controlling. Because in the CAST model, all video and all streaming is going directly from the cloud to the device. And you send small messages back and forth. What this historically has been is kind of tricky, because if it all goes well, great. But if not, there's all this also complexity in reconnect, where if you lose Wi-Fi, if the user leaves and comes back, or you change different Wi-Fi networks, some of these steps get actually pretty complex for the, the end user experience. We also made it complex for the developer. We made you become aware of every single one of the steps of this process. So our life cycle became your app life cycle. And at first, it's pretty simple. And you may have adopted the CAST SDK and copied some boilerplate code into your apps. And the first time you do that, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. But if we make any changes or any updates, this became very, very tough for you to manage both from where do I make the changes and then also where are the externalities in making every single one of those choices. So what we've done in this new SDK is implemented a much better abstraction where CAST handles both the state transitions as well as provides default UX for this very unique type of interaction model between a phone and a larger device. More specifically, we're offering two major areas, again, state management and user experience. In state management, you'll now find something called the cast context, which is a singleton that manages all phases of state, from discovery all the way through connection and launching of the receiver app. We also offer an optional reconnection service for those of you who don't want to deal with trying to figure out if there's a, a, a still a Chromecast or still a Cast TV on the network. And this is optional because some people have innovated quite a bit in this space already. So you can choose to use it or not. On the UX side, we now provide, as soon as the user hits the cast button, all of the different steps of cast beyond that press. So that you don't have to worry about callbacks and trying to figure out what's the state of whether a user's gone in or backed out of that flow. We've also, for optional use, added what we call an expanded controller and a mini controller, which are part of our UX guidelines. Alongside our philosophy of saying, if it's in our UX guidelines, our SDK should provide it. And we'll see that in the next few slides. So the new cast button, and you're seeing Android and iOS, the new cast button is fully provided by the SDK. 
And in Friday's talk, we'll actually go through adding the cast button and getting all the way through casting media. The SDK fully now supports drawing and managing all routes, including the top level of knowing what to do with the background, and then the next level in B of actually describing what action the user is about to take, C choosing uh, essentially a particular device, and D saying, well, maybe something's already going on on that device. You don't have to worry about any of those states at, at all. You essentially have a factory method to say, what color should the cast button be? And you're done. The next part that we've done is we've created, again, these customizable controllers. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a mini controller, which is a persistent play pause button. But you can actually customize which button is most useful for your app. So that this allows the user to always be in control of the streaming experience. So if you're a live app or you're a music app and you really care about skip forward or a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a heart or a star, and that's the most important button for your application, you can put that in the mini controller. We also offer an optional expanded controller, which takes the best practices of a full screen control and allows you similarly to control the buttons that are present. Again, both of these screens are optional, and in both Android and iOS, we can wire our state transitions to your controllers if you've already invested a significant amount of time in figuring out the best UX model for your users. Across the board, and I'll use Android as the example, we also provide the mini controller, the expanding controller, and lock screen controls. And these lock screen controls also work with Android Wear. So if you're just literally a couch potato and can't even pick up the remote, you can hit play and pause on your watch. For those, there's last one screen is for those of you who are trying to introduce the fact that cast is now in your app or have recently changed where cast is slightly located or, or aspects of that, we offer an Android compliant notification that says where cast is. And at first, you might think this is pretty self serving for the cast team to say cast more. We would only do this, though, if it actually benefited the developer community. And what we found is in the apps that we've tested this concept with, it drives longer session times as well as longer adherence to the app itself. So we offer this as an optional uh, behavior pattern that you can call for both Android and iOS. In terms of, one second. In terms of timing, uh, we're going to be launching this over the next few weeks. The apps that you see are full demo apps where you're going to be able to dive into the code itself. So by about mid-June, you'll see the core SDK. And the middle of the summer, you'll have access to the fully customizable controllers. We're launching iOS and Android first, and we'll add and layer in uh, the capabilities for the web sender as well as a new web receiver that's compatible with all of this. So with that, all of this is enabled by the Cast app. And I'll shift to here. What's great about the Cast app is that not only can you discover content, but you can control all of your devices. And you can see I have a Cast TV. I also have a Chromecast. And the first device that showed up was a Nexus player, an Android TV. And to talk much more about Android, I'll turn it over to Sasha. Thank you. <clears throat> so now talking a little bit about Android TV, I think this shows how Google sees the living room as one big ecosystem, right? We, we bring in other platforms into the cast ecosystem. Uh, we are actually making sure that Android TV is a prime cast endpoint. We're actually spending a lot of time making sure uh, it really is. So um, one of the things uh, Adam already touch, uh, touched on is with Cast being a very mobile-centric um, mobile approach on getting the consumer to the uh, content on the TV, with Android TV traditionally being, being more of a remote control driven, like a lean back experience. You sit back on the couch, you just grab the remote control from the table and start playing content. But also with Cast built in, we see that oftentimes in families, for example, that um, the kids like to just cast the content from their iPad or their Android phone to the Android TV device, while the parents might like to use uh, the remote control. And so the nice thing about Android TV is combining the different approaches to interact uh, with the TV, and also giving give you as developers the power to create rich new first screen experiences on that TV device. 
And one thing I like to highlight, and I uh, won't spend too much time on these marketing -y slides, but one thing I really like to highlight is Android TV is not something for TV built on the outside of Android uh, bolted on top. It really is extending the Android core framework to make TV a first-class citizen. That is important, right? Because that, only that way you as a developer have the guarantee that Android APIs uh, will always be there for you and serve TV content um, always. So your app is not being broken by an Android update. No, you, with every new Android version, you actually got new features. For the people who uh, saw this slot on the schedule and thought, I need to get out of the sun, so I will sit down here, or they were speculating on free devices, just a super quick summary. What is Android TV, actually? So it's really a TV platform, like Android has always been a platform for mobile. Android TV is the platform for TV devices, which you can interact with as a developer with all the standard tools you know from developing for Android on mobile. Same SDK, the same developer tools. And you can enable a, a bunch of different device classes on Android TV. There are smart TVs, obviously, um, with Android TV right built in. We see a lot of success internationally with pay TV set-up boxes, so cable or satellite or IPTV providers bringing their set-up box to you running Android TV. And so you basically can get your apps on there, but you also have all your cable or satellite channel content. And also, the, the other uh, category are, of course, streaming devices, game consoles, uh, things like the NVIDIA Shield, for example, um, in the market right now. These are then also uh, great devices where consumers have apps, games available to them, and it's all in, on the same platform. So talking a little bit uh, what happened in the last year also with, and with Android TV, we are actually, the ecosystem is growing. We have more and more partners uh, coming to Android TV. And I think it's a very good story to see partners who actually already launched in the first year on Android TV now recommitting new and actually extending their lineup of Android TV models for this year. So we're talking about Sony, Sharp, Philips, actually bringing new, new models to the market. But also it's great to see uh, new arrivals, like, uh, and especially in new regions like TCL, Vestel, RCA, or Beko, launching devices uh, on Android TV over the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, and we also uh, are quite happy to uh, welcome another new partner on the Android TV platform. Uh, you see that orange logo there uh, on the right. Um, we are actually really excited to announce that uh, a new partner for Android TV is Xiaomi with bringing their first Android device in the US on Android TV. So Xiaomi will soon be launching the Mi Box here in the US. It's their first Android TV product. And um, it's a very powerful device. Um, it's 4K capable, HDR capable. You get, you get all the high quality content from 4K HDR enabled content from YouTube, Netflix, and so on. It has all um, these capabilities. Comes with a nice, uh, sleek remote control that is voice enabled, a Bluetooth remote control. And um, yeah, um, they, also, they will also ship as an assess optional accessory a gamepad so you can enjoy uh, Android TV games on your Mi Box device. If you want to find out more about this, um, um, starting tomorrow at 12.30, we have some people from Xiaomi uh, over here. So starting at 12.30 tomorrow, Hugo Barra from Xiaomi will be in the Android TV sandbox uh, over there. And uh, you can try out the device in the Android TV sandbox, play around with it. Um, Hugo will talk about the device. You might have to take a selfie with him if you want to see the device, but um, that's up to you. Moving on from devices uh, and talking a little bit more about uh, content, because let's face it, in the end, on a TV device, you want to have content. Um, we are really happy how the Play Store on Android TV has grown over the last year. Uh, we, had, we had lots and lots of new, of new apps and content and games on the platform. And over the coming weeks, we actually see a lot of new arrivals. So we're really happy to get ESPN um, with a native app on Android TV. We have um, additions like CNN, MTV, Disney, 
Comedy Central, Crunchyroll, um, that will all launch their apps on Android TV over the coming weeks, or actually some of them even this week. Also, more international content was a very important focus for us. So it's, we are really happy that, for example, Spotify is launching their app on Android TV. We have Deezer and so on. So really, the ecosystem is really growing also on the content side, and we are really happy about that. So you already uh, heard from uh, Rockstar Dave this morning a little bit about what's new with uh, Android N. Uh, and he showed already one new feature in the keynote, but I want to spend some time talk about what are the new TV-related features in Android N. So a big aspect for us was when looking at Android N, especially from a consumer perspective, was um, we thought it was a little bit too easy on Android TV to get disconnected from your content. So if you're watching something, if um, and you have the video full screen, if you just wanted to look up something, maybe look up for some other content or look up what other uh, recommendations you might have, you get immediately uh, you got immediately disconnect from content. And especially if you are a little bit of a power user and you're jumping very frequently between different kinds of content apps, for example, live TV and Netflix, or in between. YouTube and Hulu, um, it was, the system didn't handle that too well. So one of the things we did was actually introducing Recents, as you know it from mobile, also in a very re remote control friendly way. So to see how that looks like, uh, let's take a look at the video. So you know the typical Android TV lean back interface with uh, easy to, to scroll content. And if you are jumping a lot between different apps, so you're, you're looking for a YouTube snippet here and then jumping back to live TV, um, looking for apps, Recents allow you to bring up all your apps you have recently used, scroll that easy with a remote control. If you don't like something in there, you can also just quickly dismiss it um, and then jump to the, to the app where you actually wanted to watch the content. So it's very easy. We, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about what's the right interaction model if you just have a remote control, right? You don't want any special buttons. You don't want anything that is very complicated to use. Um, and so we think we, we, got with a, uh, we got to a good solution here, and uh, it will be available on every Android TV uh, end device. Another topic also very much um, related to what I said earlier about losing contact with, with the content, or actually for you as an app developer content provider, losing contact to the user the moment he, he or she decides they want to they wanna look up something. Um, one of the things we wanted to invest in was also having multiple content sources at the same time visible on the screen. So have a picture-in-picture -picture mode that where you can actually, while you're browsing for new content, still be connected to what, what you're watching. Um, so to see how that looks like, let's start this video. That's great. So we exported all our, vi our demos into videos, because demos always fail. Um, <laughs> yeah. Next year, the YouTube offline mode. OK. Um, so as an example, you're watching live TV. Uh, you've, 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 it, you hear something that's interesting for you. For example, in this, it's a, it's a, it's a report about uh, a game that was, that was just uh, released on Android. And you think, oh, that's, that's interesting. Why don't I um, uh, see if I can find that? And you bring up search. Uh, you search with your, with your voice search for Pac-Man. And you see, oh, I actually, I can install that and play that on my Android TV device. But all the time, content is still ongoing. You're not disconnected from what you're watching. And we think that's a very important experience, especially with more and more content coming to the platform and be available to you. So um, what we allowed you as a developer to do is to basically enable picture-in-picture picture in for your application. Um, you can basically pin the video in, um, in a specific section. You can uh, add a special button to the media controls in the control bar if you choose to do so, which can easily switch to PIP mode for devices that do not have a dedicated picture-in-picture picture button. 
There are a bunch of uh, devices like smart TVs that um, already have a picture-in-picture -picture button, but we wanted to design an interface that with every D-pad remote control you can enable this experience. And uh, you can really easy enable picture-in-picture -picture mode for your app by basically just adding this capability to the, your uh, app manifest. Um, th there's an activity on picture-in-picture -picture mode change. You basically just implement that, and you're good to go. Also, one thing um, that we have driven from the beginning is uh, traditional TV functionality. I know we all like apps, and we like, we like games, and we like to have as many apps possible on your TV. But still, a lot of content, a lot of content consumption in the house is traditional TV. So from the beginning, Android TV, since Android L, um, implemented something called the TV Input Framework, which handles things like HDMI input switching, like physical cable tuner uh, um, control. And also, apps can expose channels via this interface. And in L, it was just simple channel switching, channel metadata, a program guide. We extended that in Android M with adding time shift capabilities. So if you bring your content into a live channel, you can take advantage of time shifting. Now in Android N, we are also adding recording capabilities. So you as a content provider with your channel input can actually offer easy recording capabilities and expose those to the user, like you know it from any uh, DVR. Um, so, to see how that looks like, uh, we take a look at this video. And here, so, this is like free-to-air antenna, this is like some device with an antenna tuner. You bring up the guide, you know all that. By the way, this is engineering UX. Uh, I had to fight a lot of fights to actually show this. Um, and fighting fights mean I didn't ask our UX person. Um, so. This is not the final version that we'll launch, but we will provide an update to the Live Channels app in the Play Store. And you can see all the standard things, like recording management, schedule management. You can delete recordings. You can, you can schedule recordings, just as you know it from any traditional DVR. And as a content provider, you can choose to opt in and provide this, this experience. This here is an example of um, how also sub-features like fast-forward, rewind, obviously work. We have plug-ins for that in our um, media controls. And so very straightforward. And uh, you can try it out as part of the Android N SDK preview. <clears throat> our, as I already mentioned, um, we, we provide a, a standard set of, of features, so ske a schedule, um, start-stop recording, um, list your recordings, including metadata. Um, it can be managed through a TV app. We, Google, we provide one TV app, which is on, for example, on like Nvidia Shield, Nexus Player, and so on, which is the, the, the Live Channels app. Some TV OEMs provide their own implementation, but they all support the TV input framework. And you can basically, as a developer, if you want to bring content into live channels that you want to make recordable, you can add this by implementing the new recording session class. It's described as part of the end uh, developer preview SDK documentation. Also, uh, one of the things we will demo it with is um, we will soon provide uh, support for external USB tuner as an open source sample. You can basically plug a USB tuner, uh, an antenna tuner, into your Nexus player, for example. You get, the, you get the content right to your Nexus player, and you can play around with recording um, and all these, the stream management I just, I just mentioned. We will uh, provide that as an open source sample as part of the Live Channels app. Another really important topic for us for Android N was supporting HDR or high dynamic range properly. So as you know, with all the UHD, new UHD TVs, HDR became a big topic. Um, it, it really makes, uh, gives you the ability, or it, gives, it's, it describes the ability to display a wide range of colors and um, in the right natural color schemes. And so one of the, one of the problems we, we saw is that there are a lot of different HDR standards out there. So you, you, have, uh, you have HDR10, you have Dolby Vision, you have um, uh, hybrid log gamma, 
And all these, and as a consumer, both as a consumer and a content provider, it's confusing, right? Because how do I know which I have to support, which standard I have to support? If I have a content app and want to play out beautiful 4K content with H, uh, formatted in HDR, which of the standards do I use? How do I even know what the device supports? So in Android N, we are adding new APIs um, to support HDR, and we are addressing two two cases. One is the case for device manufacturers. So they can actually probably plumb up their HDR decoder in the system um, and signal to the system and say, hey, I support these, HD these high, dynam high dynamic range standards. And as an application developer, for example, a content provider, for example, Netflix, they can query the system and see, OK, these are the standards that this device supports and then make the choice which stream to deliver. And that could be everything from the standard, like the HDR streams they have for this device, or they can make the call, well, this device actually does not support an HDR standard that I need, so I'm just delivering a plain 4K stream. Uh, we added the get, get HDR capabilities API so that apps can actually query for the capabilities of this device. Um, some important things to note here, the decoder capabilities will also be exposed to that, and we have some requirements around that. Um, HDR10 requires HEVC decoder to support HDR10 main 10. Um, Dolby Vision requires a special HEVC decoder, and um, <clears throat> Hybrid Lock Gamma requires VP9 profile 2. By the way, this is the, this is the profile that YouTube announced earlier this year they will support HDR in. Another important topic, especially at I.O. for developers, is the, is the Leanback Library, right? Leanback Library is our tool set to enable app development very, very easily on Android TV. So if, if you already are used to Android development on mobile, on tablet, on any form factor, we give you with the Leanback, Leanback Support Library, we give you a tool set to very easily bring your app from mobile to the big screen. And over the last year, we saw lots of, of developers use our tool set, and we got a lot of feedback. So there are certain things that they were missing. There were certain use cases we actually initially didn't envision. And we, for once, listened. And um, we, we are providing an update to the uh, Leanback library very soon. It's around the end time frame. And we're adding, for example, support for custom fragments in the browse fragment. The browse fragment is one of these things that basically allows you to, to display multiple lists of content uh, in your app very easily. But we had a very strict approach to that. We had basically one thought on how this should look like. And we got lots of feedback that, yeah, the browsing itself would be nice, but in my app, I would like to have it a little bit different. I would like to have uh, different metadata. I have, like to have a different order. And by building a custom fragment inside the browse fragment, um, that will help you a lot without reinventing the wheel. Uh, we also um, improved the media player a lot um, to support custom actions, media details and media actions specifically. That allows, if you have a very content-heavy app that wants to display a lot of the, um, the, the content metadata and interact that, with that during playback, that will help you. And also, we make branding easier. So a lot of, a lot of the feedback was, if you, if you are actually using the Leanback library as a standard to, to build your app, it was a little bit um, hard to get your own brand in there, get, make your app a little bit look, look different from the other apps. And we did a bunch of work to allow you to brand it easily without reinventing everything and build, and build everything yourself again. <clears throat> For this, this is only a super high-level teaser on um, what's going on here. There's a session this week, and we're listening to the sessions later, that goes really, really deep into the Leanback library uh, inner workings. So if you're a developer wanting to develop for Android TV, that's a great session to attend. Three of our developers will um, go through a bunch of use cases and explain a bunch of these news and how the Leanback library actually works underneath on Android TV. So um, after all these new, new things, um, how can you actually uh, interact with that? As you, as you heard in the keynote, the Android N developer preview is already available. So you can download that already. And you should get started with that. 
all the Android TV features are included as part of the standard Android SDK. There's nothing special for TV. It is just Android. So if you download the uh, Android N developer preview SDK, the Leanback library will be included. All the new TV features will be included. And uh, we also updated the documentation and some of the sample apps as part of that. Also, we got a bunch of feedback on the emulator for TV, um, it having horrible performance, which was valid feedback, because it indeed had very horrible performance. Um, we updated that quite a bit. Uh, we think it's much better now. It's actually usable as a pretty standard development tool. Um, you don't necessarily have to use the hardware anymore. And uh, also, for those of you who have an access player, you can sign up or download for the Android N developer preview image. Uh, you, can flat, you can download the image and flash, or you can sign up for an online OTA directly to the device. And uh, one important thing, we have a bunch of sessions that go into a lot more detail than this overview session. So if you're interested, uh, especially if you're, if you're working on media streaming apps, join the ExoPlayer session, both valid for mobile and TV today. Uh, we have office hours for the living room, both cast and Android TV, tomorrow at 10. And the, at 3 PM, the talk I just mentioned, deep dive into the Leanback support library. At 9, I think it's your talk, uh, going deep and introducing the new cast SDK. Um, Jay and I will talk at 11 on Friday about uh, bringing live content to Android TV, also much more detailed than this session. And at 2 PM on Friday is a great session if you have a mobile app and are wondering how to bring that to TV. How does that transition actually work? What are best practices? What is the easiest way? So um, that's a good session to attend then. We also have our support communities, developer communities. Um, you see the links here. Um, but I think with that, I think we should open for questions. I think we have microphones somewhere, if there are any questions. I think they should be on the sides. I think I see one there and one right here. So if you have a question, come up, ask a question. If not, I'm totally cool with that. And just so you know, our sandbox is literally about 100 yards that way. And we'll be there for good chunks of today, tomorrow, and, and Friday. Yeah. Hello? Hey. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, you uh, always talked about the living room, about uh, uh, Google Cast and uh, Android TV. Uh, I work for uh, education technology, actually. And uh, I'm wondering about uh, streaming uh, interactive content to the uh, smart doors in the classroom. Uh, will you ever uh, support uh, other formats than video and audio uh, for uh, casting? Uh, so I can answer. So in turn, can folks who are leaving just be a little quieter for one second? Um, the main aspect of interaction or a classroom aspect could be served in a couple different ways. If you have a mobile app that wants to display something on the big screen, like video content or voting from different students in a class, the cast model is really powerful for that. So you could, and we can follow up or join the discussion on Friday, and we can talk a little bit more about that. Custom content. Sorry. Uh, I'm talking about custom content. Uh, for example, HTML5 or Flash. So currently on Cast, we support effectively an HTML5 player and a couple different media formats. I'm happy to speak with you afterwards and go into much more detail on that. I'll join you right outside. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the Play Store on Android TV is kind of lame. And I'm wondering if they're, like, my app is buried at the very bottom, and there's really no way for people to to get it because you just have to keep scrolling to the right and nobody's going to go beyond you know three or four let's say five uh, apps down the list um, cuz i guess you're using the uh, lean back library for the play store as well so is there going to be any improvement to that so that my app can get discovered i mean it now with the play store filling more up with more and more apps it's a little bit it's the same it's the same way as mobile a little bit right you you can't expect with millions and millions of apps to have every app being 
on the front page. No one scrolls through a million, million of app. So we are focusing more on bringing categories more up and doing, more, doing some more work about featuring app and also improving search. But it is now a pure scrolling model with thousands of apps being in the store becomes less and, and less of a model. What we are trying to do is uh, very soon come up with a new model around categories so that drilling in into different types of apps for the user will be easier. So discovery by browsing categories, depending on what they're looking for, will, will be a little bit easier. Cool. Is there a way to like feature apps that are not Netflix and like all the big guys and like yeah. maybe curate it a bit and try and get the little guys a little bit up there? So we are, uh, we are actually, um, we have guidelines. If you look on android.com uh, slash TV, we, we have guidelines, for, for example, UX guidelines to be even considered for, for uh, um, highlighting. Okay. Um, then again, it depends in what region your app is available, what content is there, what competition you have. We can always only merchandise or like highlight a very low number of apps, right? So we are really investing more into like uh, category navigation, bring and disco more discovery options on uh, on the Android TV Play Store and Search. Cool, thanks. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you very much.